nostalgic movie review from nerdy married man hello again everybody welcome, welcome back back yeah <laughs> 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 All right. Well, last week's episode, we hope you guys enjoyed. It was Mr. Holland's Opus. Yeah, and this week we are looking at Spider-Man No Way Home. It's a 2021 film, uh, PG-13, and the theatrical cut is 2 hours and 28 minutes. Uh, I ended up watching both cuts for this. There's an extended cut that is 2 hours and 37 minutes. Isn't that the more fun cut or something like the that? More fun, <laughs> the more fun stuff edition. Yes. And then Rotten Tomatoes score for this. Critic is 93, audience 98. Uh, this movie stars, of course, Tom Holland, Zendaya, Benedict Cumberbatch, uh, Jacob Batalon, uh, John Favreau, Jamie Foxx, Willem Dafoe, Alfred Molina, Marissa Tomei, and more. That we'll talk about later. Yes. Um, so, synopsis for this movie, if you guys don't know. With Spider-Man's identity now revealed, Peter asks Doctor Strange for help. When a spell goes wrong, dangerous foes from another world start to appear, forcing Peter to discover what it truly means to be Spider-Man. Which, I, I think that encaps- encapsulates it pretty well. <laughs> yeah. uh, because a lot of people talk about how the MCU Spider-Man movies haven't felt like Spider-Man movies. And I'm, I tend to disagree with that. I really love the Spider-Man movies. Yeah. But, I, 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 I mean, I get some of their points with it being anchored on Iron Man a lot. And I did like a lot of the scenarios with both of them, but I, it did feel like some of his character was too tied to him in some aspects. Well, and I love how this movie really brings it home that it really shows what it means to be Spider-Man with that yeah. responsibility. And I just think it's the coolest way to have a trilogy be a full origin story. Yes. Instead of being the first movie, having a quick origin. Like it, it's now he is officially spider-man yes <laughs> and that seriously is incredible and we'll get more into that at the end uh you have fun facts for this one what's that do you have any fun facts for this one fun <laughs> facts. yeah uh, i guess the biggest one is tom holland actually helped save this movie from cancellation uh by yep. forcing negotiations between sony and disney to continue on so that spider-man can still be in the mcu and then he'll also be in sony's franchise i well. really really loved that and when i heard the news of that i was so much more in love with tom holland than i already was because oh, well, i just think he is the perfect spider-man he's so passionate about the character and uh i guess some other fun facts before we get into how we feel about the movie apparently according to zendaya and tom holland they were uh kind of scared and frightened on set because of Willem Dafoe's portrayal of the Green Oh, Boy. yeah. Because <laughs> he did so well. They're like, man, this guy is really good at his job. He's insane. And uh, his character in this is just incredible again. Like, well, apparently, Willem Dafoe, he like really pushed and insisted on being allowed to participate in a lot of the stunts and action performances because it was like his condition. I want to reprise this role. I want to be doing this stuff. Yeah. So like during a lot of the fight scenes and stuff, they did it. He was in as much as possible without like the, yeah. first, there are stunt doubles, but he did as much as he could. One small fun fact that I saw that was kind of fun was Benedict Cumberbatch actually admitted to not reading the full script because he wanted to have the finale surprise himself. Yes. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of fun, too. And like during the premiere of the movie, uh, Willem Dafoe actually wore a green face mask. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> premiere. Yeah, th- this movie is really fun. Uh, it- it's really hard to talk about everything that happens in the movie with how we feel because it is a the whole movie is a spoiler yeah so for this beginning part of course like the trailers showed willem dafoe and alfred uh, molina so i'm okay talking about that yeah there are there's so much to talk about that i think i just want to go into how the movie like if it's worth it (laughs) yeah well we can do that and we'll go right into the spoilers then yeah um with our new rating system i say buy it everywhere watch it because this 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 is one of my favorite movies yes. of all time. Uh, if we were doing percentages, I would have 100 percented it on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> but Fair it, is, it is a great movie. Um, so buy it and watch it as much as you can. This would have been like a 97, 98 percent for me. Um, this one for me is definitely all 
100% worth it in every way, every scenario, anytime you can watch this, anytime anybody brings this up, watch it. Like, this is going to be one that I'm going to watch over and over and over and over and over and over again. It is seriously just incredible in every way. And as a spider, long time Spider Man fan, as I know we both are, and how much we both love Spider Man, as we've made it obvious to you, I mean, David's wearing all Spider Man gear for this episode and everything, even like everything, we, like, this is our both of our favorite Marvel characters by far. Oh, and we both had a lot of really strong connections to him throughout all of our childhood and throughout all of our adulthood. And seeing this movie come to be what it is was just the most incredible thing. And I cannot praise this movie enough. Everyone needs to see this movie. And it makes all the other Spider-Man movies worth watching again, too. Yeah, absolutely. which makes it even better because it somehow made every spider-man film that preceded it better too absolutely <laughs> so yeah let's go ahead and go into spoilers then yeah uh and then before spoilers oh yes next week we are doing an original versus remake which is kind of a difficult one for us <laughs> yes. uh, we did uh willy wonka and the chocolate factory versus charlie and the chocolate factory it's really cool episode it was fun to kind of compare and contrast so join us next week for this. yeah and on to spoilers bum, bum, bum. um i guess like normal i'm gonna start in the downfalls go for it i have like two and that's it i don't have any myself <laughs> the f- the first downfall that i mean everyone has brought up is dr strange actually casting the spell and the main reason is because before casting the spell he didn't go over any details of what happens he just goes okay uh so we're gonna do a spell that makes people forget and that's all you need to know and then while casting the spell that's when he's like going over details yeah people so, are just messing it up because of that and dr strange thought it was going to be a simple easy spell yeah and so one of the things that i say and i say the same thing with because a lot of people had uh problems with multiverse of madness with the way that reed richards acted in that and they're saying the same thing with Doctor Strange in this movie. Mm-hmm. These are arrogant people who think everything they do is the smartest way to do things and the best way to do things. They do make mistakes because of how smart they are. I did not have a problem with this because he is that arrogant that he does just start things without explaining it. And he always, he says it throughout the movie, the entire movie. I always forget you're just a kid. I always forget you're still in high school. I always forget that you didn't think of all of these other possibilities of all these things. Like you didn't talk to them. You didn't try to plead your case before coming to me for a magic spell. Like he talks about all these things throughout the entire movie. And I'm like, so I don't get the hate for those things because it's more one of those it's, I was trying to nitpick. Yeah, <laughs> it's one of those things. Though, for it me. really doesn't bother me that much, but I know it is a big thing for a lot of people. Yeah. So one of the things for me, I wish they would have actually explained how Peter is legally OK more like they brought in uh, Daredevil. Matt Murdock, but they didn't Same. show any of like, I know it would have added to it and they didn't need to go fully into it, but if they had a simple thing of like Matt Murdock and him in court and just say like why he was legally let go, mm-hmm. I would have liked that a little bit more. Cause they did kind of just like brush over it. Like it was a big thing where this giant case of him murdering people <laughs> that I'm like, how did you just get out of it? Like, I want to know a little bit more to it, but it would have been cool to see a little bit more of it. Plus, I mean, I wouldn't have complained of see about seeing more of Charlie Cox. Yeah, I mean, he's he's the daredevil. He's yes. so good. Uh, one of my only other downfall has to do with a major spoiler that, of course, was spoiled to the whole internet, and uh, that is, you know, Andrew and Toby do come back. Yeah, for this movie, and the uh, downfall I have is when Toby's Peter is talking to Ned about Harry and Harry's death. The only problem I have with that scene is that he says, my friend Harry died in my arms after he tried to kill me. Yeah. Which true is true because Harry did try to kill Peter yeah. at the beginning of Spider-Man 3. Yes. But he died in his arms after saving Peter's life. Yes. So it's... It was a really weird, I guess the wording of it, 
uh, kind of bothered me a little bit. Well, and a lot of times, like, most people do focus on the negative. Yeah. So you're not thinking of him as that friend that was always with you and you had all those touching moments with. If I tried killing you tomorrow, you would talk about that more than you would talk about the 10 years we've known each other. I, I just feel like it downplayed who yeah, he's I, 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 I definitely get where you're coming himself. from, but I, I definitely was just but like... That's the only other downfall I have, and it's really just... It's nitpicky because it, it doesn't bother me as much as it probably said. Yeah. Sounds, but other than that, the whole rest of the movie, I have no issue. Um, I have a few more. So for me, I've kind of wondered how Peter got the villains out of Strange's prison. Uh, there was a never showed in it. the middle of the floor. Oh, there was there? Okay. I didn't, I guess I didn't see that. You see, uh, Dr. Strange earlier, he. Uh, teleports Peter into it to show him how it works, yeah. and then he twists this mechanism and pushes a button. And oh, opens that's it. right. Okay. So I mean, um, I that's also how. I also felt weird. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I also felt really weird about Happy and Aunt May's breakup, and I felt like it was only there as a way to involve Happy in the movie, but to also keep him separate for most of the movie. Mm, I could see that, I guess. Um, and then. The biggest downfall for me ever. No, Peter Porker. <laughs> like, it would have been funny to have, like, a small cameo of one of the Spider-Verse characters, and I know that's coming later in movies. Well, but... Honestly, I kind of was hoping for more Spider-Man because, you know, what is it, MJ tells Ned, just keep trying until we find our Peter, and then he only tries, like, one more time, yeah. and Toby shows up, and I'm like, He's gone. Well, it would have been funny if, like, before they brought in Toby, if, like, he opened it up and then it showed, like, Peter Porker was like, what the? And then he just, like, closes it, like, what? I'm not a cartoon. <laughs> like, <Nope>. nope. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, like, some, something like that would have been funny. And it's, it, that one's just a really fun one. I don't actually see that as a problem, but I just would have loved to see more Spider Man, like you said. I know when I was doing research, uh, I've noticed a lot of people complain about Ned in the movie and mainly the fact that it almost seems out of nowhere that he gets these magic powers and is able to use the sling ring. And honestly, that doesn't really bother me that much. No. Um, I mean, I like Ned's character. And well, and how would you know that you have magic unless you're holding a magic item? Yeah. It, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, he's... Well, and like, yeah, maybe he could have brought it up earlier as like a small Easter egg in one of the previous movies, but... A lot of people complain about it because in Doctor Strange's debut movie, it showed him struggling so much to make that portal. Yeah. But, I mean, everyone's different when it comes to magic yeah. and kind of learning different skills. Well, so, I, I don't know, it didn't really bother me that much. Well, and one of the things with that that I, I think is interesting is... Ned talks about how his grandma told him that his family has had magical ties in their heritage, mm -hmm. whereas Doctor Strange never had any ties into his heritage. So Doctor Strange is learning it, and he also had a blocked mind. He was very skeptical. He was he's a scientist. He's always believed in science, never believed in magic. So for him to release his mind into believing in magic is way harder for him than it is for. Uh, I forgot there, there was one movie. The, oh, it's Avatar. I love that uh, the James Cameron's Avatar movie. Because uh, all these people have tried to be, like, sync up with these Avatar bodies, but not a lot of people were good at it. And he just immediately knows how to run. He knows how to do these things. And they're like, clear your head. And he's like, I'm a meathead. That's very easy for me to do. I have nothing in my head as it is. I don't have all this knowledge and everything that you guys have. So it's really easy for me to clear my mind, like, unlike it is for you guys, because you guys are thinking about all the intricacies of what this means. Whereas I'm just like, cool, new body. I have legs. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that is where like those things come in, because it is just simpler for him, because he's not as crazy against it as yeah, exactly. strange was at the beginning. Um, some of the like other highlights. Uh, one of the biggest ones is Tom and Zendaya's chemistry in the movie. Oh, seriously, it's just so good, and it just makes me smile whenever I see them on screen together. Like I love when they're Facetime each other, and he's sitting there like, "Yeah, I'm the most famous person in the world, and I'm still broke." Yeah. And it's it's really funny because that it's so true to the, the comics and Spider Man. He always was that broke character, and mm -hmm. growing up poor always in my life. It was one of those things that I'm like, yeah, I get it. 
Um, I loved how this movie started right where the other one left off, like yes. immediately after. I thought that was perfect. Um, I loved, yeah, we talked about Charlie Cox already. Daredevil was amazing. The one of the, my favorite scenes is the bridge scene oh. when he goes to try to convince the gal from MIT to let them back in. And when Doc Ock arrives, I was like a little kid. It threw me back to when I was in theaters watching Spider-Man 2 back in 2004. Mm -hmm. Or, yeah. and I just, Something like that, yeah. Uh, so amazing. So happy to see these characters back. And what I love about it is bringing these characters back is not just nostalgia bait. It yeah. is not just, hey, they're in it for a second, so you could be like, hey, that's the guy from the other thing. Yeah, It is more... They are actually part of the story. And the biggest part of that is like when Andrew and Toby show up, they're in it for over they're an hour of the movie. Yeah. They're in like half the movie, basically. And all and these villains are in it for most of the movie. It's just it's cool seeing them being act like making an impact on the story. Whereas unfortunately, a lot of newer movies nowadays are just throwing <laughs> characters from other small things Easter egg. Small cameo, small this. Like, and it's like oh, cameo cool. just so you could be like, oh, cool, that character's here to yeah. kind of make the show you're watching better. But I, I just love how this movie does it and makes it mean something. Yeah, no, the way they incorporated all of all of the Spider-Man movies all into one, yeah, and made all of them fit into one movie was incredible. It was almost as good, is not if not as good as when all the infinity war and Endgame came into fruition and you saw all these characters on screen at once. Cause it, you would never think that you would be able to have a movie with all of these Spider-Man and all of these no. villains, because like <laughs> when Spider-Man three came out and they tried doing too many villains, everyone hated it because of how much they didn't be able to balance all the villains in the movie. And this one balanced it so perfectly. Every villain gets their shot. Of course, some more than others, but even the ones that don't get as much screen time. And I'm specifically talking yeah. about the lizard and Sandman. Yeah. What screen time they do have is so good. Well, and lizard and Sandman were two of the ones that were hated more than most. Which is so unfortunate because I love their characters. I, I yeah, I mean, I loved them too to an extent. I think Lizard was one of the ones that downfalled a little bit more. Like I, I missed the Lizard from the cartoons. More. I disagree. I mean, I love the cartoons and comics rendition of the Lizard, but I just I think was it Reese Efons? Is that I don't know. I, I think it. something like that. He just does such a good job as Kurt Connors, and I mean, I do wish in the Sam Raimi universe. Um, that Kurt Connors was going to be the lizard in the fourth Raimi film yeah. that never got to be. It would have been cool to see him do it. But I just, I think The Amazing Spider-Man 1 did such a good job with Lizard. And a lot of people don't like it because of the contrived story. And a lot of people don't like the design of the lizard. Uh, and that's because in the comics, he I mean, he's had a bunch of different designs in the yeah. comics too. Well, and I didn't necessarily hate the design or anything. And I love that movie. I loved the Andrew Garfield movies more than most people did. Mm -hmm. um, but to the same extent, like, I didn't like the story of him trying to change everyone to lizards because I didn't think that was as much of what Dr. Connors was trying to do. He was always just trying to get his arm back. It wasn't about making everyone lizard. It was about well, splicing their crazy. DNA. I know, but like it just felt a little weird to me. Like it just didn't feel like his character did. Like that was one of those characters that I I loved. One of my favorite villains, and so it was. I mean. That storyline was pulled straight out of like a comic book, though. I mean, even was well, the PlayStation One Spider-Man game, you fight a bunch of lizards minions, and it's a bunch of people that got turned yeah. into lizards. But I mean, there are stories of it, but yeah, we digress or whatever. But it, it's seriously, and they're talking about balance. The balance between Peter and Spider-Man in this is amazing as well, mm -hmm. and I think it does it better than any other Spider-Man movie has done. Yeah, I think the way that they showcase all of the emotional impacts of every Spider-Man movie in different ways is incredible. Everyone gets their little redeeming moment. Yes. It's just pure bliss. Well, and I love moments like when he goes back to the school and everyone's like cheering or hating him and like, MJ, are you going to have his spider babies? And then you get to like the teachers and the principal and teacher are like greeting about the school and have those like shrine made for him and handle the like, you're a murderer. 
I don't want you here. Let's do it. <laughs> you know what you did. <laughs> it, it, it's kind of funny because it is that duality of there's people that love him and there's people that hate him. Like Joan, Joan, Jane, 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 Joan, wow, I cannot say. Jay Jonah Jameson. Thank you. Wow. I don't know why I was struggling with that. Speaking of JJ back, oh. JK Simmons is just born to play that role. He and is. I, I did read somewhere that he was just so excited to be brought back in Far From Home and then to even come back in this one as well. It's just so cool seeing him reprise this character and still enjoy doing it. Well, you could tell he had such a great he's time. He's so perfect for it. Like, I just can't ever not hear him every time I think of this character now. <laughs> He's the perfect, and he just looks the part so insanely well. And that's one of the things that I think Marvel always kills is their casting choices. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any casting that I don't like. For yeah, MCU exactly. Um, let's see the tension in the apartment scene uh, when oh, Peter starts using his, his spider, spider sense. sense. Uh, oh, I love that scene because there's no music, and then Peter puts this magnet device onto Electro. And Electro doesn't like it. Yeah, and the the tension builds, and it's because of the like you're watching the lights on this thing just start going, and you're like, what's going to happen when the light gets all the way to the top? And the tension is building, and then I love the camera shot when he just Peter starts walking out into the big room of the apartment, and it's like, well, oh, and I love the affected audio of like Aunt May like trying to talk to him, and he's like just trying to focus on the sense like there's a sense happening i know something bad's about to happen i feel it in my own like and that there's a couple of different spider sense scenes like when uh not to segue away from this for a little bit but when dr strange knocks him out of his body Mm -hmm. and is trying to take the uh the box box from him and he's still moving and he's like how are you doing this and it's because the spider sense is working without him being in it Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's insane. But yeah, this spider sense scene, and he looks, and like Jamie Foxx is like, what you looking at? And all these other things, and everyone's like wondering what's going on. And then when he shoots that web, and then you just see Goblin smile, and you're just like, that sense of yours. <laughs> you're like, oh! <laughs> He's like, I've always hated that sense of yours. Well, honestly, the first time I saw this movie, I mean, I figured he's probably sensing Goblin, but when it was showing Electro, and I'm like, well, maybe Electro's... Because, I mean, it keeps alluding to Electro wanting to get the arc reactor. Well, and also alluded to uh, Lizard not wanting to do things with them, too, and and that's like staying down in the truck and all these other things. And I was just like, there's a lot of things that could have happened, and I love the way that they made it ambiguous, uh, ambiguous until that moment, and it was so perfect. So good. Uh, And I guess from that scene, I want to segue into Aunt May with this movie. Uh, And just her character throughout all the movies has just grown so much. And I I really like her character and seeing her little moments. And there's this, after that scene, when Goblin kills her. And it is just so gut-wrenching. And the part that gets me the most is... There's the duality between Peter laying there and he's telling her, it's just you and me. And it made me think of the first movie when she's like, it's just you and me when they're going uh-huh. out to dinner. And it's like, oh, the seriously. And the, the first time I ever saw the Aunt May dying thing was in the Spider-Man 2019 Sony game. And oh, okay. that so. impacted my heart so much. I cried so hard at that moment. And I did not think the movie was going to go with that especially because they've always done the uncle ben which i mean we didn't have uncle ben in this spider-man iteration which was really nice and they, them waiting three movies for this moment and doing it the same if not better than even the video game did well, just, like it was so insanely impactful and i'm not gonna lie i cried so hard at this moment because marissa tomei like as much as like when the first movie came out, I, I remember talking to one of my friends I saw the movie with, Nick, and I was like, I turned to him and I was like, it's weird being sexually attracted to the Aunt May. <laughs> and he kind of chuckled at it, but like, she did so amazing at, with all of her love and support for him, knowing he was Spider-Man and doing all these things for him and all the things she did for him in this movie and was there for him. And I loved her, like showing her with Feast 
too and her working at feast because that was another thing in the spider-man 2019 game which i was like i love that you're pulling from some of the sunny stuff and some i mean i know it's in comics and cartoons and stuff too but like (laughs) it's just so incredible seeing these things like that are all from other stories that have been recent that i just i fell in love with and got to see them again like on the big screen and it was incredible oh yeah and it's just done so well but uh and then the the absolute best parts of this movie all deal with the three peters working together Mm -hmm. their chemistry together all the actors look like they're having such a fun time and they just play off of each other them talking about their webs especially toby being organic webbing and they're like where wait what does that that work where did that come from can it come from other places (laughs) like i love some of those lines uh it's just it's so so incredible i have just way too many notes of all the things i like I'm probably not going to go through all of these, but uh, one of the lines I love from uh, Aunt May while we were talking about Aunt May was I love when she's uh, asked Otto if he wants water and she's like, fresh or salt? I don't know what you drink. Is your an octopus? Is your an octopus? <laughs> <laughs> and I love even like uh, Peter and uh, Ned and MJ like making fun of his name and stuff like, really? Your name's Otto Octavius and you're a Dr. Octopus? Like, okay, what's your real name? I, I still just love all those dynamics of Peter with like their real name, but and like speaking of like those scenes and stuff, Spider Man's fight scene with Goblin, bo- both of his major fight scenes with Goblin, the one in the apartment and the one at the end, incredibly impactive. Like, Peter's both of their acting in these scenes are so insane. When Peter jumps on him in the apartment and is just pounding his face, and Goblin's just smiling. <laughs> The entire time he's just getting pounded in the face and then him bashing him through the all the f- levels of the floor. And it was just like like they were not holding back on their punches. It was full force. You could feel the impact of every moment. And you're just like, I was on the edge of my seat the entire time. I've got goosebumps talking about it. My hair is completely <laughs> raised right now. Like it's insane to me. Well, and even the impacts during the last fight between them too. Like there's that point oh. where Peter jumps up and he makes that giant dent in the shield. <laughs> and it's like that would have killed him. Like, yeah. <laughs> like if he didn't miss. Well, and he wanted to kill him. And you could so feel bad. how badly he wanted to kill him. And it's something that they hadn't really shown with Peter very much in these movies like i don't think they've showed it very well in any of the spider-man movies until this one i think this is the best rendition of peter not wanting to hold back like and peter trying not to hold back and him wanting to actually kill someone like we, they heard we heard uh andrew's talking andrew's spider-man talking about how he stopped Stop holding back man. punches mm-hmm. which i have a theory with that because i mean like in the morbius trailer and stuff when they kept on showing like the the graffiti on the wall and it says Spider-Man and murderer and stuff. And because he was Sony Spider-Man, I think that he is the Spider-Man from that universe. And I kind of hope that in this new Sony versus Spider-Man villains, we get to see Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. I, I, I would love to see Andrew Garfield get his third movie. Yes. His third solo. Like he well, deserves it. Seriously, just it's so crazy impactful, and it is crazy when Spider Man does not hold back because he can kill people so easily, it's not even funny. Like, he holds back all the time. The amount of strength he has is like just even hitting someone, like, like in Far From Home, when he takes the glasses back from uh, Mysterio, no, uh, on the bus from Flash. Oh, yeah. Uh, he, he knocks him out just by barely tapping him. It's like, imagine if he actually full on hit him, he yeah. probably would have blew up that guy. Well, head. and like, uh, there's this nerd channel that I watch where it's, it goes with like how strong characters are in movies. And in, uh, Homecoming, when he's holding the parts of the ship together. Oh, yeah. They said they calculated it at over a million pounds of force that, that he's holding the ship together. And he's like, yeah, and I'm insane. like, it's it actually insane how powerful Spider-Man is. And I think he's a very much underrated character. When people are talking about strength of characters, Spider-Man's very much always underrated, where he's always been probably one of the top 10 Marvel characters as far as strength. Oh, Especially yeah. when he gets into like the omniscient Spider-Man or like the galactic Spider-Man or co- the cosmic Spider-Man. That's yeah. the one. Yeah. I was, I was like, why can't I... 
But like, it's just insane how much it is. And I love like all the scenes with like the Spider-Man with their villains, like Doc Ock and Toby. When Doc Ock comes back up and climbs up the and it starts playing the Raimi McQueen music. Yeah, and he's, how you doing? I'm doing really good. <laughs> so, trying to do better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is a callback to Spider-Man too. I just um. And then seeing Andrew talk with Jamie Foxx, like it's Peter and, and Electro talking. And the, the my favorite part of that is just, I always thought you would have been black. And <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sure there's a black Spider Man out there somewhere. Which we get the <laughs> audience. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of moments, when Andrew catches MJ, and because well, to, uh, Tom Holland jumps out after her first and he gets hit and then Andrew's like no and he sprints and he full dives and he catches her and he lands and he's just sitting there and he's like almost in tears and then he's like you okay and she's like yeah and she looks at him and sees he's like almost crying are you okay she's like I was just bawling like a bitch. Like I was just like, dude, come on! Like that was such an amazing moment because, like, it, when that moment happened in uh, Amazing Spider-Man Two, I cried so hard because that's one of my favorite comics. It's it's the moment for me where Spider-Man realized what he needed to do and how he needed to be and how he had to be so careful with everything because no one has the strength that he does. And when he accidentally snaps her neck by trying to save her, it's one of the most brutal moments ever. I named my dog Gwen Stacy because of Gwen. Like she's one of my all time favorite characters. I have the comic of her first appearance. Like she's by far one of my favorite things, and I wish, I hope they bring her into the Tom Holland. I, I would like to see her. Uh, I think it'd be really cool if eventually they get Emma Stone to come back as Gwen, but it'd be cool to see her as Spider Woman. Like, I, I want to see a different Gwen Stacy. Like I love having her. Well, I want to see her come back and like like eventually they're gonna lead to the Secret Wars and stuff, and that's uh, this whole multiverse. That would saga. be cool. Yeah. I mean. Uh, well, we're hoping to get like Toby and possibly Andrew back in the secret. Yeah. It'd be cool to see, you know, Spider Woman and some other <laughs> some of the other spider characters. Um, I do think Tom and Sadea's chemistry, as you were talking about earlier, is probably the best of all the Spider Man couples. Yeah. I, I really probably. did not yeah. like Kristen Dunst. You didn't like her? Well, I I liked her as a but like I also like hated MJ's character in those movies sometimes because she was always so wishy washy. And she was always like, they were like, never really worked out, which I mean, I know like that kind of their story with MJ and Peter is they're always back and forth and they're always falling in and out of love. And even like the video game, they are still in and out of love eight years later after he's been Spider-Man for eight years. So I know that's kind of the story, but it's also just, she was really annoying. I was really happy to hear Toby say in this movie that, that they worked it they out. They made it work. Yeah. Out. Like, yay. <laughs> I don't know. I, I really liked her as uh, MJ, but it's really cool kind of see, seeing all the different ways they react in relationships. Yeah. Um, I, I definitely like the goodbye scenes and Tom Holland figuring out that this would be the best way to save everything and put everything back to normal is everyone forget about me, which one of the things I wanted to talk about with is I, I keep hearing this debate and I get so mad at this debate. It says make everyone forget who Peter Parker is. Not make everyone on Earth forget who Peter Parker is. Nick Fury doesn't remember. Thor doesn't remember. The Guardians don't remember. No well, one remembers. He didn't say everyone in the world. No, he did not. I watched that scene five times. He says, make everyone forget who Peter Parker is. Make everyone forget about me. That is the exact line. There is nothing that says world or Earth Everyone has forgot. <laughs> There's not a single person who knows about Peter Parker. But my thing is, I wonder, because it's a multiverse spell and multiverse things happened, if that is with all of the universes of Spider-Man. I think it's kind of implied that way because it's the only way to close the, the exactly. universe back up. So I think everyone forgot. So does uh, that mean MJ and Toby's universe doesn't remember Spider-Man is 
Okay, no, I'm not that. But like, no, like I'm saying, like it, like it, it, it could be a really huge moment that okay. we didn't think about again. Like, th- th- like when dealing with spells that cross over multiverses, it is crazy the impact. Well, the I bigger think- the spell, the worst the risk reward is and i think that's really going to come into play when it gets to the secret i i think so too because maybe it did really mess up those universes and maybe that's how we get toby and andrew back they come back and are like that spell screwed us up. yeah one of the things i wanted to do I, are we done with highlights and stuff for this we can uh, we can both go on forever about these highlights and we don't want this episode to be ridiculously long but uh i did want to talk about our thoughts for the future okay yeah so uh do you want me to go first with that or do you have thoughts for it you go ahead okay so one of the things i love the way this ended with him going to his apartment and him starting anew yeah um i think like like we said this was this is the movie that leads into the origin of spider-man this was the movie that makes him his own character this was the movie that puts forth where his starting point usually is in these movies. And so for me, I wonder, and I'm going to laugh so hard, if he goes to college and he meets Harry and Gwen in class with Dr. Connor's teaching. That'd be pretty great. <laughs> um, I do think they are going to be going with Flash becoming Venom in this universe. I, I was wondering Flash either Venom or maybe a Goblin. But I know in the comics, Flash does end up becoming Venom in what? In, well, and there's a lot of people that are wondering if Ned's going to become Hobgoblin. Which and it could happen. There's, there's, uh, that's one of my theories because what if somehow he finds a way to remember, especially because he does have magic ties to him, but he's pissed at Peter for never coming back like he promised, and he ends up becoming a villain. Because there is a lot of stories of Ned becoming a villain in a lot of the comics. Honestly, I just hope that whenever Ned remembers, I hope it's Peter going up to him and starting their secret handshake. <laughs> that would the, be cool. The muscle memory of Ned just start doing it with him, going like, oh, that spark. Um, I'm really uh, excited to see the future of Spider-Man, uh, mainly with the symbiote being in this universe now yeah uh with that end credit scene and i'm excited to, which i mean definitely could lead into the whole flash becoming venom and throughout all of these mcu spider-man movies there's been a lot of hints mm-hmm. at the flash just having such a rough life like his parents don't care about him he's usually on his own he's a spoiled brat so well, I really, and most stories where flash has that storyline he becomes Venom and then eventually becomes uh, Agent Venom. Yeah. So, so it'd be really cool. And with the symbiote being in the universe now, I think it could happen. I'm really hoping that Spider-Man gets the black suit first, though, uh, like in the comics. Yeah. Because I just I've always liked that better. Like nothing against the Sony vs. Venom movie, but I I think Spider-Man is just such a huge part of that character. It's it's so hard to make venom well and i i think that still might be the case because like each piece of the symbiote still has attachments to the hive mind Mm -hmm. and with venom recognizing spider-man because of his hive mind yeah as we saw in the movie i do think the symbiote's going to seek out Mm spider-man but i think instead of getting eddie brock we are going to be getting flash and so i think it probably is going to be a few movies until we see probably flash come back as Venom, but I think we yeah. probably will see Black Suit Spider-Man first. Um, I do wonder if, uh, because MJ says that she's going to fi- she figured it out once, she'll figure it out again. If she's going to figure out these things, and one of the things that I think is the way that she's going to figure it out is during the new end credit scene, in the extended version, they're going through and showing all the pictures from the Europe trip. Yeah, And there's a picture, there's one picture that still has Tom in it but there's a pigeon blocking his face and people are going to remember that guy, but not remember who he is. And MJ is going to seek out who he is. It was funny when I was watching that end credit scene, I kept pausing the movie to look for Peter in the background. He's in almost every picture and recorded video. Okay. So like when it shows the picture of them going to the uh, contest from Spider-Man homecoming, uh, you see Peter's shoulder, like he's bending behind someone 
And then when they're putting up the homecoming sign in the school, you actually see Peter in his gray hoodie. Yeah. Like he's backwards. Yep. And then there's a couple other pictures from the Europe trip where there's the outfit he has where he's wearing the plaid shirt. He's in the background talking to other people, but he's not. His yeah. face is invisible. So it's kind of cool seeing how Peter is forgotten. And with the uh, Madam Web movie being announced, I do think that we are going to have Toby be in this movie because he talks about his feeling of the multiverse. When they, we first see him, he's talking about how he felt the uh, the other Spider-Man, how he yeah. felt Tom um, before he even knew he was there and how he knew there was another Spider-Man there. And oh yeah, speaking of moments, we didn't even talk about them all talking to him after Aunt May's death about oh. all of their deaths and stuff like that. Like, oh man, that was so Rough. good. And them all saying the line together instead of like with the great power comes a great responsibility was so touching and everything. But I, I do think that we are going to see Toby in that. And I think that all three of these guys are going to have their own things in these Spider-Man universes. Like I said, I hope we see Andrew in the Sony verse more. I hope that because they've already announced, I think in the uh, third Spider-Verse movie that they, they might actually have live action scenes in it. Really? So I really <laughs> hope That's so cool. I really hope that we see maybe these three Spider-Men together with all the Spider-Verse characters because be seeing them with Peter Porker and Spider-Man Noir and Spider-Man 2099, which we're going to be seeing next Spider-Verse movie and all this stuff, like all of these characters, like if you love Spider-Man as much as you do, or we do, like we love every single Spider-Man character. Every Spider character is just Amazing in their own ways. I'm really excited to see how they bring Miles into the MCU. Because yes. there's uh, Miles has been hinted at since Homecoming. Yeah, because I mean, we had Uncle Aaron was in it. Yeah, Prowler before being Prowler was in it. Uh, Donald Glover, and he mentions his nephew mm -hmm. Miles. And then I love the mention in this movie about a black Spider-Man. And I'm just I'm really looking forward to seeing Miles appear and seeing who gets cast as him. And I know right now there's a rumor that apparently Jaden Smith wants to play Miles. I heard that I don't want to I'm I'm not a big fan of that casting. I don't I mean it's not true or anything yet. Yeah. But I think personally the guy that voices Miles Morales in the Into the Spider-Verse movie, yeah. He'd be perfect. That would be really, um, really cool. I also think the guy that voices I uh, Miles in the video game yeah. would do a great job. Um, I do think if Jaden is involved with the MCU, they should just bring the music in from the Miles Morales video game because Jaden Smith actually made the song I'm Ready for that video oh, game. Oh, nice. And so it'd be kind of cool. <laughs> I heard like one of the fan castings was, uh, I can't remember the actor's name, but the kid from Stranger Things might be a good Miles too. He could definitely be a good Miles. Yeah. So, but I mean, no matter who they pick, I mean, I, as I trust the MCU, they're going to pick. Oh, they're the casting. Right like we said, we, we both love almost every single casting choice the MCU has ever made. I, I can't think of one off the top of my head that I don't like. <laughs> so it's just like, seriously, this movie is just so, so incredible. And we both love this movie so much. And it was everything we ever wanted to see from when we were a child like this is everything coming to fruition all these movies coming together in the best way we never thought we'd ever see this much of this many things of this caliber it's incredible yeah i mean it's it's just so good seeing all these actors come back to reprise their roles and but i mean on top of that the movie itself is just i think it's so well written and the director it just did such a good job john watts yeah uh and actually i i another fun fact is uh this is the first uh trilogy in the mcu that has been done by the same director for all three films yeah so i thought that was pretty cool um but well, and he just you did can... so well building these pictures. seriously like you can tell how well these stories intertwined and i did love how much they made this the most spider-man film it could have been like i couldn't have done thought of a better way to do this and the way they did it and although there is some things that people are nitpicky about or people complain about they're small things and they're things that i we can create reasons for why they need to be that way and i just i can't think of a better way to do it and i just yeah i think it's perfect the way it is it's perfect <laughs> that's all you need to know 
go watch the movie go enjoy the movie yes um i think that's all we have today yes. um again a reminder next week we are looking at the original remake of uh, willy wonka versus charlie and the chocolate factory so please join us then